vlog. <laughs> Been a while. A few days ago, I put out something on Instagram and in my Instagram stories, and I asked people there um, if they had any topics they wanted me to talk about on my vlogs that I should vlog about more. And someone responded, and it's my cousin, Mr. John Valdez. He's awesome. A uh, really smart guy. Goes to uh, UPenn, I believe. And he told me to uh, che teach how to listen slash appreciate music like I do. I can do that. I thought this would be a fun one to kind of break down into a sort of video series. So are you ready for my next video series? <laughs> the way I'm going to break this down is I'm going to talk about the genres that I like going from the amount of kind of head knowledge I know of a genre down to the one where I know the least head knowledge of. There are kind of three genres that I weave in and out of on an almost daily basis, and that would be classical music, rock music, and jazz music. And I'll delve into pop once in a while, and maybe something else once in a while, but really it's those three classical, rock, and jazz. And today, I'm gonna talk about the classical aspect. So I might not even finish the entire video in one day, to be quite honest with you. I am still suffering from jet lag, and the daily aspect of the vlogs, I can't do it anymore. Otherwise, I'm gonna get sick, but I still wanna keep coming out with stuff, so here we go. I'm gonna delve into classical right now. Classical, 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 classical music. I need to start defining stuff related to the genre, especially the way that kind of like non-classical music, non-classical music listeners think of and listen to classical music. Classical music, I would say it's the pop culture term. It's this encompassing term. It includes the Baroque era, the classical era, the Romantic era, and the 20 to 21st century era. That would be the scope of what most non-classical people think classical, mu classical music uh, encompasses. Most of the popular classical music resides in one of those eras. The Baroque era. Baroque is the fancy term for a highly ornamented pearl. I believe that is a good term for the kind of music that it describes or encompasses. Popular composer constituents of this era would be Bach. This is where people started to realize that music could be a very intellectual kind of deal, and they started to learn how a lot of melodies and harmony come together, and they got really good at it. Bach, in particular, became really good at it. He mastered a technique known as counterpoint. Independent melodies weave together, the four melodies interweave to create harmonies and ultimately create the entire piece. Bach became very good at that, and it's very complicated, it's very hard to do. So that would be Baroque. The classical era, the famous composer from this era would be Mozart. It was time to water down the very learned, the very complicated style of Baroque, and uh, so Mozart became very good at creating what I would call hooks and melodies, very pleasing to the ear, much more listenable to, especially compared to Bach. The moment I go, dun, 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 bum, 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 you know that's Mozart. And that is why Mozart would be the quintessential classical era composer, because he was good at uh, honing in on making, kind of making the piece sound good, um, without making it too complicated. That's the way I would describe the, the musical fashion of the classical era. After the classical era, we've got the Romantic era. There's a lot of composers from this era. Mendelssohn, Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff, what have you. This is my opinion, by the way, but the one who kind of paved the way for the Romantic era would be Beethoven. So Beethoven took the concepts from the classical era. The focus of the classical era was very nice, ear-pleasing melodies that people were hip to. Hooks and phrases that were pleasing to the ear. Beethoven was not so interested in that. He took it a step further and infused kind of this emotive like angst into what 
the uh, classical era had. In the Romantic era, everyone was either kind of angsty or they were super into um, extreme virtuosity. So Paganini was very big during this era. Paganini is the demon violinist that uh, everyone was afraid of. They thought he was possessed by the devil because he could play things on the violin, even to this day that nobody else could. The Romantic era basically is characterized by this extreme um, like intensity of like emotion and sometimes virtuosity. Before I go into the 20 slash 21st century era of music for the classical genre, I have to say these first three eras were defined a lot by this concept called tonality. Now, to explain that to a non-music major especially, tonality would be most easily defined by what we call a triad, which is this concept. Or towards maybe the end of the Romantic era, people were starting to get bored of the sound of the triad. And that's when people kind of started really experimenting with sound. In the 20th to the 21st century, they wanted to break away from the very ear-pleasing sound of the triad. And it was the major, major defining characteristic of the Baroque, the Classical, and the Romantic era, in my opinion. Um, because everyone was using triads, but I just played for you in those eras. In the 20th and the 21st century era, um, the major constituent composers would be uh, people like Schoenberg, Webern, Berg. These people just wanted to jar your ear. If you took a piano and pushed it down the stairs, that would be the music of the 20th to the 21st century. People were just not interested in pleasing the ear anymore. Actually, that's most of it. People were not interested in what I would call in layman's terms, nice sounding music. Look up Schoenberg, look up Webern, you know what I'm talking about. that's out there and just being able to listen through a complete Beethoven symphony or like I just listened through Mahler 4 on um, this like little record player that I just got it's just inspiring to see that there are all of these people who've gone before us who've just written these awesome works that we can just kind of escape into another world and yeah live in the beauty of a great French horn solo. <laughs> oh. yeah. I think as so as a classical musician, like, do you listen to it to like relax or uh, to pass um, the time? It depends. If I'm feeling really stressed out, then I have a really great Debussy album that I'll put on and his piano music just like calms me, but I think in this phase of life that I'm in, it kind of stresses me out right now because <laughs> I'm in the process of applying to grad school and practicing all yes. the time. Yes. Um, so there are other genres of music that calm me more, but I think <laughs> when I need to feel inspired, I'll pull out just a rock on off concerto or Chike One will always do that for me when I need to be inspired. Go practice. Okay. Listen to classical music. <laughs> there you go. There's the final thoughts. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. <laughs> Hi. Why did I give kind of like the explanation of what classical music might actually be? I have to say, classical music is the genre that I have kind of the most education in, especially schooling wise and academics wise. And around the world, it is one of the 
genres that is heralded as one of the highest forms, if not the highest form of listening. And that has caused a lot of classical musicians to be kind of snooty, honestly, in my opinion. They think very highly of themselves, and they're very closed-minded to other genres of music. I try not to be like that, because I honestly think every genre has something cool to say. The music history of classical music, and the paradigms as presented by the different eras that I talked about, totally affect the way I listen to music, classical and otherwise. I try not to stay close-minded in the sense that I, I try not to think that um, classical music is the best genre in the world. And honestly, I think most of my teachers and even colleagues are of that mindset. So that's why I listen to so many other genres. I think every genre has something cool to say. Although I do think that with respect to classical music, it, it has influenced so many different other genres in so many ways. Other genres kind of owe a debt to classical music in that sense. We wouldn't have as much knowledge about how scales and chords work together, even in other genres, if not for classical music. I honestly think, for example, that Mozart was one of the first masters of what I would call the hook. You know, Mozart was one of the catchiest composers still, in my opinion. A lot of people that are popular in other genres have been influenced by Bach and Mozart and Beethoven. The entire music art world might owe quite a big debt to classical, but uh, I just try not to think solely in the classical mindset because uh, I like to be influenced by other kinds of genres, particularly rock and jazz <laughs> and a bit of pop and everything else, but um, that's me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watched this, John. If you found it helpful, please let me know. If you'd like to know other things about other genres that I might be listening to, please let me know in the comments below or just email me or whatever. Give a shout out. And I will get back to you if you do such things. Um, I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching this. Talk to you soon. I'm gonna go edit this and eat yogurt while doing that. Peace out.